you, you know, what your home is going to sell for in today's market. She's going to show you pretty close to how long that period of time is going to take. And she's also going to show you all the costs involved in selling. Is there anything else you would like Teresa to be prepared to answer when she arrives? No, I think that covers it. Great. Oh, do you plan on putting your home on the market Tuesday? Yes, we do. Great. I go, Teresa, I just confirmed your appointment, and they said yes. <laughs> Fill that freaking contract out before yeah. you go. Sign them up. One of the answers to that confirmation is, why do you ask? Because Teresa's very busy, and I prepare all of her documents for her. I'll tell you what, I'll just go ahead and prepare the employment agreement ahead of time just in case you decide you do want to put your home on the market at that time. See, how professional does that sound? Mm -hmm. Extremely professional. So when you show up at the door, you're a realtor. All I know about Dina is she's a realtor. What is my, what, is, what do you think the world's average perception of a realtor is? Think it's good? Nope. It's like attorneys. Scum suckers, mm -hmm. right? That's what they are. Bottom feeders, people who wait, make way too much money for what they do. So if Dina had an appointment and Teresa confirmed it for her with the dialogue I just gave you, now do they have an opinion of Dina? Yeah. They do. They have an opinion. She's a very professional business person. So that's the basic expired dialogue. I wouldn't use it. I just thought I'd show it to you. Now, the cards on the table dialogue. That's the one I like. I'll, I learned some dialogues from a guy named Andrew Lacey. You see, I always wanted to sell a lot of houses. So you know what I did? It's kind of funny. Every week, I called this guy in Texas, and we role-played back and forth for an hour. I'd be the expired, he'd be the realtor, he'd be the expired, I'd be the realtor. We just did it back and forth, the back and forth, the back and forth. And he was in Texas. Therefore, I developed a little bit of a Texas draw in my dialogues, which seemed to work just fine. I liked it. So then it came up with this dialogue here. I call it cards on the table. You know what it's like. You know what the terminology is. Put your cards on the table. In other words, you know, don't, don't be BSing me. Put the cards on the table. So, hi, I'm Dan with Century 21. Right? Remember? Three to six seconds. Got a, got a second. Ma'am or sir. I want to be as polite as I can be. Obviously, I'm calling you about your home here on Primrose Lane. And obviously, again, ma'am, I do know that home went off the market yesterday. Is that true? See, intro, intro, question. Right? There's a question now. Is that true? Yes, it is. What happened? Right? So we just want to know. What happened? Did you just decide not to? What happened? Three to six seconds, one, one second intervention window. What happened? If they don't respond, did, did you just decide not to move? Were the offers you get, did, did, you, did you get offers but they were too low? Uh, you think the realtor did the job? I mean, what, what's, what do you think happened? Right? So. This dialogue here, you're going to find, is very, very, very well received. Very low rejection. Very low. Because you're being way too polite. You're being so polite, you know, uh, they, they couldn't pick on you if they wanted to. And then, of course, what are we going to say? You know what? As it turns out, I'm going to be two blocks from you today at 10. I'll tell you what I'll do. I just stop on by, explain to you what happened. Right? Did I set an appointment? I set an appointment. So, to the point. Hi, I'm Dan with Century 21. I noticed that your home expired from the market yesterday. I'm just really shooting it out of them. I was wondering, this is another Andrew Lacey dialogue, I was wondering, were you planning on getting that home sold or were you just planning on listing again with another agent? Now, Here's the rationale behind that dialogue. Does anybody here ever learn anything about body language? 
you know, I mean, they're standing body language, hands go in the pockets, you know, and I mean, you, you know you're losing me, right? Your car sales people get a lot of, you know, the crossing of the arms, the crossing of the legs. <laughs> the, the, or, or they scratch your head when they're lying. <laughs> the, scr the crossing of the legs, you know. What they're doing, what they're closing you out. Well, you know, if I'm sitting across the table from Dina and we're having a listening presentation and I see her close up, I can open her up now. I could do it because we're looking across and I will start mimicking her and I will start moving my hands more to get her to. So I can open her up and obviously I'm very sure that she closed up. I saw her do it. But on the phone I can't tell. Right? So on the phone I have no idea. You could be sitting there like this. <laughs> you know? And uh, so what Andrew used to say I probably ought to get a hold of Andrew and say, you know, you made me a ton of money, my friend. But this, uh, this dialogue, he'd say, the way I can tell is if I can make them laugh. He's because if I can make them laugh, I close. The first chuckle I hear, you know what, ma'am, as it turns out, I'm going to be about two blocks for you today at 10. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to stop on by and explain to you what happened. And that was what Andrew would say. And so that's why he said that. And sometimes he'd say, uh, you know, was you folks still planning on getting that home sold or, uh, or was you just planning on listing again with another agent who couldn't get her done? Yeah. And he'd, he, and he'd, and he'd, play, he'd play around with that because he was trying to get them to laugh. So expired dialogues. You know, Figure one that works good for you and do it. How many? How much time can you put into a client expired today? How much time does it require to call 100% of the new expireds that come up every day with a phone number? On the outside, right? 10 minutes. That is still a very, very viable lead. If I wrote NA, which meant no answer, if I wrote N-A, I got more excited than I did if I got them. Because if I got them, I knew three other people were going to get them. If I didn't get them, I knew very high probability I was going to be the only one that was going to get them. Because I called them every two hours all day long until I reached them. I had a big notebook, big three-ring binder. Punch it, put it in a three-ring binder. I drove out to expires, see, stop and look at other expires, dropped off packages, knocked on doors, did all these kind of things. Every time I went back to the car, I took out the cell phone, which was about this big. Had a little antenna, $6 a minute, as I recall. <laughs> and, and I would call the expires. So I knew the probability of a, of a no answer was just right in my court. I knew the probability that I was going to get to them first was very high because most realtors go, well, called expires today. You know what? I've called expires now every day for three days. That stuff doesn't work. It doesn't work. Are you kidding me? It doesn't work. And then I, oh, I see that property go on the market. Huh. Same one went on the market with the same agent that got the last one from me. No, they didn't get it from you because you didn't go after it. Right? 